now going to show how to make a drawing of the end plate. So um, notice here I have the model open, and I recommend that you open it up. It makes it a little bit easier to place the part initially in the drawing. So going File, New, select Standard, IDW, go Create, and it brings up a canvas here to place the different views. And when I select Base View, notice it automatically selects the end plate as the part for the base view because that was the most recent part I had open. If that's not the part you wanted, you can just go Open Existing File and find it. I'm going to make it a little bit larger by changing the scale to 3 to better fit the canvas size and hit OK. And then I can move this and wherever I would like on the actual canvas and we have the base view. Going back to the original drawing, notice that they had a cross-sectional view. Cross-sectional view is different than a projected view. If I hit projected and go across like this and left click to place where I want it and right click create, it does give a similar view, but this is just a side view, not the cross-sectional view. So I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to click section for the cross-sectional view. So once I click section, now I'm going to actually click the part that I want to make a section of. And I'm going to just move my cursor slowly um, until I get a center line right there. Okay, it took a moment for it to show up. So you can see that little drop down center line. I'm going to click with my left click, move my cursor down, and then I'm going to left click again. And I'm going to right click and go continue. Now it brings up a pop-up window on how I want to name the um, cross-sectional view, what scale I want it. I do want to show the hidden lines, and I want to make um, the edges smooth. And there are some other choices here, but I'm going to leave that there. And then just move over where I'd like to place it, and left-click, and now I've placed the cross-sectional view. The next thing that I'm going to do is start dimensioning the part. Um, so once I, I go up to annotate and then click dimension, and if I click the side here, I can move over to place the dimension there and hit OK. Notice that it's really small and that the, the font is very small when you initially place that. To change that, you can go to manage, then go to styles editor. It's taken a moment for that. Um, to pop up, but there should be a window, a drop down window that shows up. And then um, go to text and go to labels and change the text size. I found like 0.36 is a decent size, and go to note, change that to, to 0.36. And you can change it to something else, but I found that that was a reasonable size. Go save and close, and it increases the size here. Now I can double click on this and I can change a few things. Um, I can change the precision and tolerance if I only want one decimal place for the number. You can see now it's changed it to one decimal place or no decimal places. Um, the original drawing didn't have any. I'm just gonna leave it at the default of two. You could also um, change the tolerances if you wanted to have an upper or lower bound for some tolerance in manufacturing. We're not going to do that here in this drawing, but um, there are many options there. I'm going to hit OK here, and it places that number. Um, then I can dimension the bottom as well. Um, actually, I need to go back to annotate. Click, Make sure dim dimension is selected. Click here and move that down. When you place the numbers, make sure that they're not overlapping with something else, just to make it easier for the reader. It makes it a lot cleaner. If you want to move the part after you've dimensioned it, you need to be out of dimension. Um, notice it's selected, so hit Escape. Um, and then you can kind of move the part where you would like to give um, more room at the margins. And also, you can um, move the numbers after you've placed them as well. Again, you have to hit Escape or make sure that nothing else is selected. To um, put crosshairs or center points in, you can click the, this button here, and you can select the center of each point. 
Now it's a little bit different for the very center, the circular pattern in the center. And if you look at the original drawing, there's actually this dotted circle showing the center pattern. And to get that, um, you can put the centered pattern button. First, click the very center of the circle and then work your way around. I'm just left clicking here and go back to the original hole and then right click and go create and it should create that. Then you can go dimension and actually dimension that um, circle there. Now that circle was 1.625. If I wanna show 1.625, I just need to go to another digit of precision. It's looking like the cross-sectional view is getting a little close to where I want it. So I'm gonna hit escape to deselect dimension and I'm just gonna move this over a little bit. Using the hole and thread button, you can um, dimension the different holes here. And um, I can go over here on dimension and click on each side here to show that this is a half inch thick. Going back to the original drawing, there are some additional dimensions which I'm sure you can figure out now. The final thing I wanted to show is just these three little lines here, how they're produced. Um, you can go here or here to create the lines. If you go center line, what you'll want to do is um, click once and then click again. And then you can just go right click and create. It creates that line. Um, or you can use the center line bisector, which basically if you choose here and here, it will create a bisector line between the two lines that I selected. I'm going to leave that there. I think you can figure out the rest of the details and how to dimension the part.